Welcome to all friends of sophisticated image processing. Today we're talking about decoding raw formats in Baselight. And as usual, please ask your questions in the chat or comment below in the videos. Okay, let's begin. Let's talk about raw formats in Baselight. At the beginning of my timeline here, I have three very common raw clips. The first one is an R3D red raw. The second one is an Arri raw from a mini LF. And the third one is an XOCN clip from the Sony Venice. What we notice is that most of these raw clips are decoded automatically in the input color space settings. And we can see here in the color space journey that most of these raw formats are decoded to a scene referred linear color space. I recommend you always leave the input color space on automatic. This is the best practice and this ensures the highest image fidelity. You will notice that some of the parameters in the raw parameters, which we can access here inside layer zero, are grayed out for automatic decodes. In that case, Baselight is taking control over these parameters to ensure the best quality and the correct decode of the footage into the system. For every raw, we can see the color space option is grayed out and for red raw, there are several options. Also other options that are only valid for display referred or legacy operations and that might harm the image fidelity are deactivated. So I recommend you always leave this on automatic. Still, I want to show you how you can match the automatic decodes with manual steps, just to give you a better understanding of what is going on. So for the red raw, I'm duplicating my clip, putting it here on the top. And now I go to the input color space. And instead of automatic, I'm now choosing red linear red white gamut RGB. Then I go into the R3D parameters. And here I now have access to the tone curve parameter output primaries and also a linear output option. And basically what I need to do is I need to match now manually the tone curve of the input color space and the color primaries of the input color space. In that first example here, my input tone curve is linear. There's a special mode here. I need to set linear to on and output color primaries already match. So let's compare this clip to our automatic decode and we can see it's a perfect match. We are now mimicking what Baselight is doing in the automatic decode. But we can also say, okay, I want to decode it to 3G10 log. So then we choose red log 3G10, red white gamut RGB as our input color space. The image looks wrong. We now need to manually match the tone curve of the R3D decode to the input color space. So I need to choose log 3G10 here. Let's compare again to our automatic decode. And yeah, it's a perfect match as expected. Okay, let's move on to the every raw clip. I'm duplicating the clip, putting it on top. And instead of automatic, for a mini LF clip, I will choose the every linear, every white gamut 3 input color space. In the every raw parameters, I can select the color space and it's set already to linear white gamut 3. So let's compare it to our automatic decode. And yeah, it's a perfect match. But what if we want to decode to log C3, every white gamut 3? Then we go to the every raw parameters and match that setting. And we can see, yeah, again, a perfect match. There's one special case about every log C3. It is ISO varying or exposure index varying. That means at ISO 800, it's a perfect match to the linear decode. But if we choose another ISO like 200 in both clips, we will now see that there's a slight difference between both decodes, especially here in the shadows. I explain that phenomenon in more detail in our ARRI workflow video. Just remember that the linear decode, basically the automatic decode, is the more accurate one. 
that's the correct one. For Sony RAW clips, we don't have any color space options in the RAW parameters. We are always decoding Sony RAW to Sony Linear S Gamma 3 color space. So here for the input color space, instead of automatic, I can choose Sony Linear S Gamma 3. And again, we can see it's a perfect match to our automatic decode. So there are no further options to decode directly to S log 3. You might ask yourself now, why are you decoding always to linear scene referred color spaces? Why are you not decoding to log color spaces? And there are various reasons for that. So first is that linear floating point encodings are not clipped at any arbitrary limit. Or they are basically unclamped and log encodings can have issues with that or at least the implementations with integer encodings. Baselight internally processes the images mostly in floating point numbers. And floating point math is ideal for linear encodings. So we get fewer rounding errors and more precision working with linear images instead of log images with a floating point encoding. So log images should be treated better in integer encodings. Then there's the case that I briefly showed about every log C3 where the linear decode is more accurate. And the log C3 decode can introduce small differences for ISOs that are not 800. And another point is that digital cameras are natively also working in linear color. So the AD converter that converts the analog signal from the image sensor into the digital world is creating a linear image. So the digital image is starting in the chain in a linear color space. In some SDKs, the last step inside the camera manufacturer raw SDK is the application of the OETF, the optoelectronic transfer function. That is basically the log encoding onto the linear image. And on the other side, inside Baselight, the first step that we are doing in our color management when we, when we are receiving a log encoded image is we are converting it back to linear to process it further in the color management. And so basically by directly decoding to linear, we are saving us often two unnecessary color space conversions, first from linear to log and then from log back to linear. On real images, you're typically not seeing a difference between a log decode and a linear decode, but technically it's the better thing to do it in the linear way. Let's move on to this clip here. That's a red raw clip. And let's examine the R3D parameters of that clip. We can see that the ISO and the exposure is set to 250. And we have these small buttons here on the right. The left offers a switch of that respective parameter to the default value for that camera. So here I can click the D button to reset it to the default value. And for that red camera, the default ISO is 320. And now the second button is highlighted, which resets the value to the metadata that was set inside the camera while the clip was shot. Per default, base light decodes images with the camera metadata values, especially for the exposure and the white balance. That generally makes sense because we want to start treating the image with the settings that the DP set on the set while shooting the clips. We can see the same here for the color parameters. The Kelvin for that clip here, it's an underwater clip, is set to 7300 Kelvin. And the default for the camera is 5600 Kelvin. So it's a little bit bluer. But of course, we can adjust the metadata here for each clip. In the top right here, we can reset all the parameters to the default values or all the parameters to the camera metadata values. We can even customize here a specific values that we set on this clip for all new strips of the same type. Basically here are 3D clips coming into the software. 
But my recommendation is leave it on a default and load everything in with the metadata values from the set. On this Sony RAW clip, we can see that the color temperature is not on the default value. The default value here is 3200, but it was set to 5500 for that clip, which obviously makes sense and it gives us the much better starting point for the grade. Here I manually set the exposure index down to 200 because this was an exposure bracketing and we can see with the native 800 that was set in the camera metadata that part of the clip here is a little bit overexposed. For Sony Venice shots we also have that additional apply exposure index mechanism. The Sony Venice cameras they are dual ISO cameras so they have two native ISO values. The Sony Venice 1 has a native ISO of 500 or 2500 and the Venice 2 has a base ISO of 800 or 3200. Some software when they decode Sony Venice RAW do not apply the exposure index that the DP can set inside the camera. This is a smooth value you can set it to any kind of exposure index but some software they're decoding only with the native ISO of the clip. So let's examine what is the native ISO of that clip. We should see it here in the uh, metadata view in Flux Manage here. We can see ISO 500 for that clip. So it's from a Sony Venice 1. So and to match the behavior of these other software tools, we can say apply exposure index no. And then we see a different result to our 800 value here. So if I set this to the base ISO value of the clip 500, now switch between yes and no, we can see now it has no effect. Generally, I would say leave it off. That's my recommendation. But in certain cases, you might need to match the decode of other software. Then you can just turn it to no. Or if you want to see or show the DP what was the native ISO of the clip, then you can just set this to no. Another issue with especially Sony RAW clips is that you might want to do certain operations in the native lock color space of the camera, in that case S-Log3. So what if you want to do something in S-Log3? Because you can't decode it to S-Log3 here from the Sony RAW parameters. So if you just want to apply a, a CDL or a grade in S-Log3, you can just set the working or the stack color space basically to S-Log3. So now base light converts directly from linear s 3 to S-Log3 as the first step when it enters the base light stack. It doesn't really matter if the last step in the Sony SDK would be a conversion from linear to S-Log3 or if the first step in our part of the pipeline is a conversion from linear to S-Log3 because the math is similar. Now, if I apply a grading layer and using a legacy operator like film grade, I can do native grading in S-Log3 color space. Also, if I apply a CDL grade in the CDL operator, I can select a processing color space. So I could say, please process these CDL values in S-Log3. Then I could set the stack color space also back to my common working color space. And you can see the CDL grade is reflected here in the color space journey. So what if you need to apply a LUT that goes from S-Log3 to Rec709, for example? I insert a LUT operator and I browse to my folder where I have a LUT. So this is a LUT that expects S-Log3, s 3cine as an input color space, this one here, and it outputs 2.4 gamma Rec 709, this one here. And so now by tagging the input and output color space of the LUT correctly, this is something that you should do with all LUTs. So if you don't know the accurate input and output color space of a LUT, it might be a better idea to not use that LUT. So if you tag that accordingly, 
you will get the correct result. We can see also the LUT here reflected in the color space journey. So we are now treating the image upstream of the LUT in our working color space, in that case T log. And then for the LUT, it's converted to S log 3. The LUT is applied in the correct way, and downstream of the LUT, the image is now in Rec 709 2.4 gamma color space. And the last question could be, but what if I want to see the S log 3? How does the S log 3 look like? Yeah, then we just set our viewing color space temporarily to S log 3, and we can examine the S log 3, and we can also see it in the scopes here. But you should not grade with a viewing color space set to a log color space. This is just for technical examination of the image. So I'm quickly setting this back to my common viewing color space. So there's really no need for a decode to S log 3 or to other log color spaces with other raw formats. Let's set the ISO here back to something darker. Yeah, maybe let's choose again 200 and examine a little bit the resolution of the file. So here my viewing format is HD 1920 1080 and the input clip is 6K Venice RAW. And my cursor resolution is set to optimized. That's the default in Baselight. The other options are draft and max quality. And especially the difference between optimized and max quality can be interesting. What does optimized do? The optimized mode tries to optimize the playback performance of the machine for input codecs that allow a lower res decode of the footage. And most RAW formats have that option. Baselight will attempt in that case here a 3K decode of the Sony RAW clip instead of a full res 6K decode. And the rule how that optimized decode is working is Baselight checks if a half res decode of the input format is still larger than the viewing format. So a half res decode here would be 3K. The viewing format is 1920-1080, so 3K is larger than 1920. So yeah, it will attempt a 3K decode for that viewing format. And if I switch that here to max quality, now it will do a full res 6K decode even for a 1920-1080 viewing format. And we can see some differences. So let's examine some pixels in close detail. So this is the max quality decode. And this is the optimized one. So you can see some color values here shifting and typically the optimized decode might introduce a little bit stronger colors at fine edges. Look at the leaf here. It gets a little bit more yellowish and in the max quality, it's more toned down. Also notice that an optimized decode sometimes can appear sharper because it has sometimes sharper, small specular highlights but it is actually not showing us a better resolution. The max quality is showing us the better resolution and a nicer image. So don't get tricked by the wrong sharpness of the optimized decode. But without zooming into the image, like I just did, at normal size of an image, you will typically not see a difference between optimized and max quality decode. If you want to work in max quality, then set your cursor to max quality and you can save the cursor settings when you reopen the scene. Another alternative is you can set an, in, an individual clip to always decode at max quality. So now if I would flip between optimized and max quality, we see we get the same Im image because Baselight is always decoding at max quality for that clip. Another important thing to know is that the render settings per default are always set to max quality. So there you will always get the maximum quality. If you need to render for something like dailies or a screener, you can set this to optimize to speed up the render time. Also one thing that I recommend for heavy to decode raw clips, like the first one here, like an 8K R3D is use the input strip caching option here. This will decode the image only once. And if you're doing that, typically I would say 
then always then also set this to always decode at max quality because then base light is only decoding the clip once at maximum quality and from there on when we are grading it downstream it will then feel like a lightweight codec there's one thing i forgot to mention about the optimized decode and that is if the viewing format is larger than a half res decode in that case here a half res again is a 3k but our viewing format is ultra hd then we will also always decode at max quality so we, you can see that now is still giving the same result and also optimized will only go to half res it will never go to quarter res or even lower resolutions that is only happening in draft quality mode so optimized will only go to half res at a maximum so i think it's a good compromise to give you the maximum playback performance in grading sessions let's move on to some other raw formats and one is for example still the camera raw so here i have a raw frame from my fuji stills camera that i can put into base light base light is decoding still raw frames via the libraw library which is an open source library and we are using a special handshake color space a linear xyz color space to get the still raw frames into our color management when you examine this decode to one by a typical photo app you will notice that it will look maybe a little bit more flat and less contrasty than in the photo app and that is because we are decoding the frames more similar to a cinema camera and i will show an example for that in a moment but basically what we can now do with that frame is we can grade it in the same way as we would grade other raw frames from cinema cameras so here i could add a little bit of contrast and then for example add a print film emulation to the clip and yeah let's create a little bit warmer for still raw i highly recommend you always set the ca input strip caching because they can decode uh, very slow there are not many options here in the still raw decode you can just say you want to use the embedded white balance or you don't want to use the embedded white balance so these are the two options the default is that we use the embedded white balance the next two shots are two stills from the same scene and the first one here was shot on a red camera and then was transcoded to aces linear exr files and this is what i have here in the timeline and let's perform a basic white balance on that clip here with base grade so i'm just using that white patch and yeah maybe also adjust the exposure a little bit and the second one was shot with a canon stills camera as an canon raw cr2 file format and now if i match the white balance between these two clips so i'm not doing anything special i'm just doing a basic exposure and white balance correction here based on that white wall we can see that we can bring still raw frames in the same ballpark as cine camera raw frames via our color management and this opens up possibilities for basic look development for shows where maybe only still raw frames are available from a location scouting tour but note that you can only use raw frames from still cameras and bring them accurately into the color management of base light if you're shooting jpeg inside the camera then you're much more limited in that regard let's move on to some more advanced topics so here i have a scene that is shot with some more intense led light and once it was shot with an alexa 35 camera in Harry raw and here it was shot with the mini lf camera in Harry raw and so we can see the mini lf is decoded to Harry white gamma 3 and the alexa 35 is decoded automatically to log c4 
an airy white gamut 4. And if we examine both shots very closely, we can see that there's, for example, here the, the, the white shirt is not matching exactly color-wise. Here it's a little bit more yellow-greenish and here it's a little bit more cyanish, I would say. And that is not uncommon because we shot the same scene with two different cameras, with different sensors. But what Ari is offering is a different decode method for the Mini LF RAW. So the Alexa 35 RAW is always decoded to log C4 via the new reveal pipeline. So I can set this manually to log C4 and we can see that uh, other, all other decodes fail inside baselight. So the new footage is only decoded via reveal to log C4, white gamut 4. So that is fixed. I set it back to automatic. But some of the legacy ARRI RAW footage, especially from the Mini LF, can be decoded through both pipelines. The default for Mini LF footage is to use the established ARRI white gamut 3 decoding method. Then it matches to other legacy ARRI cameras like the Amira and other Alexa cameras. But if you're mixing a Mini LF with an Alexa 35 in a show, then it might make sense to decode these clips manually to log C4, every white gamut 4. This is what I'm doing now, setting this here, going to the every raw parameters, and now choosing log C4, white gamut 4. Actually, we want to maybe compare both options directly. So I'm copying the clip, putting it on top, and here setting it back to automatic. And so then we can do a direct comparison between both decodes and we can see some small differences. For example, here, now that white cloth is matching better color-wise to the Alexa 35. Also here, the intense magenta colors are matching better to the Alexa 35 because now that mini LF clip is decoded through the new reveal color pipeline. If you want to do that for all clips in a scene, you can use the media import rules for that. The next example is another rare case where we might want to disable the automatic decoding. Here we have a DNG raw file from a DJI camera. And with DNG files, we often have the problem that the color metadata inside the files is not accurate. Here we can see Baselight is currently decoding it to linear tone curve and Rec. 709 primaries. And the tone curve, I would say, looks pretty good on the shot, but the colors seem a bit desaturated as a starting point for that clip. And so what we could try is decoding that clip to DJI linear degamut. Maybe it was encoded with that color space into the DNG, but the metadata is not giving us that hint. So I'm selecting now linear degamut as an input color space. I go into the DNG parameters and for manual DNG decodes, it's best to use the linear decode option. Don't use the sRGB one because that one is already display referred and you might lose dynamic range in the shadows or highlights. So now I switch the tone curve to linear. In DNG raw, there is no output primaries option available. So we have to then manually find that here with our linear input color space. But I would say the linear DGA mode for that specific clip looks more realistic as a starting point for the grade. And the last clip for today is a ProRes RAW clip recorded on a Sony A7S III camera with an external recorder. For ProRes RAW, we use linear Rec 2020 primaries as a handshake color space. So the ProRes RAW SDKs hands us the images in that color space and we are converting it from there into the desired working color space. In the ProRes RAW parameters, I can adjust the ISO and the color temperature. There's one small detail here at the bottom, which is the brightness value, which is set to standard, which is the right way to decode the ProRes RAW. So there 90% of uh, diffuse reflector is mapped to the value of 0.9 in scene linear space. 
but other software implementations map that value 11% brighter, so they map the 90% reflection target to 1.0 in linear. So you will notice a very small shift in exposure on the image. That setting can become handy when you need to match decodes from other third-party software that may be used that slightly incorrect brightness value. But in the end, it's not really harming the image quality-wise. In that case, the most important thing is that you get a perfect match to the other decode and with that setting, hopefully, you're able to achieve that. Okay, that's all for now. Yeah, thanks for watching. Actually, there's one more thing that I want to show you to, get, to prove even a little bit more trust into the automatic decode of Baselight. So here we're back at the Venice clip. And so now I'm duplicating that clip again and putting it here on the top. And now I'm decoding it with the maximum exposure index value, 12,800. So now I'm really super overexposing the image. Let's examine that image as in S-Log3. Uh, let's pop up my RGB parade. So here we can see that in S-Log3, that image here would be severely clipped. So we would lose image details in the highlights, but we're not decoding it in S-Log3. And so now I'm adding a grading operator here, base grade, and grading it all the way down in extended mode. Let's put my uh, cursor back to Rec 709. And we can see when I grade it down six stops from here to here with base grade, we end up at the exact same thing. So we don't lose any image fidelity. Uh, technically, lock, uh, lock curves don't have to clip at 1.0, but there's always a risk for that. So, I'm, so if you would have recorded that thing with that eye exposure index in camera as S-Log3, then you would, would have definitely lost the highlights. But I just want to show you um, how powerful that linear decode can be. And as the last thing that I just want to mention for completeness, because I could, was not able to show all different raw formats that Baselight can work with during the session, Baselight can also decode various other raw formats in the industry. For example, Blackmagic raw, uh, Phantom Cine raw, Panasonic V-RAW from the very cam cameras, uh, Canon, uh, Canon raw from Cine cameras from Canon. And uh, also from uh, Sintel scanners, we can decode the Sintel raw. And all of the raw formats should be color managed in base light. So we should decode them correctly into our color management. Okay. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Cheers. <laughs>